Spoon of consciousness. Let's raise our frequency. Welcome to the Spoon of Consciousness podcast. My guest today is Susie. And today we're talking about some stuff that's going on. Susie, let's, why don't you start us off? <laughs> well, um, you know, I think what's still relevant is the energies of the eclipse and what happened during that time. And uh, I, I remember some of the channeling that I did about the eclipse, but not all of it. Um, but one of the things I remember was Prime Creator said there was going to be a reset of the energies. And I have definitely found that to be true in my own life. I'm just noticing certain things that were um, in creation have stopped and reset. It's like I've jumped different to another timeline or, um, you know, the energies just aren't relevant anymore of that creation. So I, I bring that to the conversation because I think it's important if someone is also experiencing those energies of reset to understand what's happening and to really work with surrender and and letting go mm. so in the time of eclipse it, um i i don't really know how to put it but like i it sounds really untechnical but i just felt weird about certain things and and a bit uncertain i think is a better word to use um for example like making decisions about whether to you know, how to spend money I think was one of them um and that was very strange because normally I'm okay with it like you know just just do what feels right but in this time it just it felt really strange is that something to do with what we're talking about the energies resetting I definitely think it could be um a, a lot of what's happening for people is they're entering a void space which means that things that used to be familiar, things that used to be clear, things that used to be known are now somewhat of a mystery. Like people might feel directionless or not quite sure which way to go or what the right thing is to do or what the right next step is for them. Um, so it can be a little confusing. And if you're not used to navigating the void space, it can be like very uh, disorienting. Like what, what the heck is happening in my life? You know, what's going on? What, you know, it can be very, I think disorienting is a really good word for it. <laughs> so when we're in this void space, does that mean that we're basically like wondering? Well, it depends how you approach it. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are wandering unless you choose to do that. But it means that there's sort of like a clean slate it means that you're moving into the unknown. So the, the familiar, the known world that you've created for yourself can suddenly disappear and you're in this brand new scape of reality. And it's like, okay, what's, what's here? So you can explore it, you can wander it, you can start creating within it. Um, but the important thing is to let go of the other reality which can be very challenging for some people, you know, myself included sometimes. <laughs> I was just about to say, it's so, that whole process of letting go of pretty much anything is so, I, I had to recently let go of, um, eat, like, the idea that I'm going to, you know, be oh, perfectly okay with not eating sugar and, and it's not going to be a challenge at all and I'm going to be fine. And then I saw the chocolate bar and I was like, oh man, I started sweating, started thinking about my life, like what am I doing? And it's it, like, I find that at times of eclipse and full moon, um, I, I have like, I think about stuff in, in a different way. And I really like have that difficulty with letting things go. But how would you suggest we confront that? Well, first, awareness is really key you know, noticing that you're actually having trouble letting go, that you, you know, maybe you're holding on to something or maybe you're just not surrendered. And um, honestly, we don't always know what we're holding on to, which can make it tricky for those of us who want that intellectual kind of information. And so if you don't know what you're holding on to, that can be kind of frustrating because it's, it feels in some ways like it's harder to know how to let go if you don't know what you're holding on to. But the truth is you can still surrender and essentially, that just means that you are allowing a higher power, a higher force of, of life, of wisdom to take over. 
So it's not like you're quitting or giving up. It's not that at all. It's just saying, you know what, in this moment, I don't know all, I don't have all the information. And so I'm going to surrender to the, the powers that do have the information. I'm going to surrender to the life force that does know the information. And if you're really connected with source and your I am presence, it makes it easier to surrender because you have this muscle of trust and knowing that you're going to be okay, that life is going to unfold in a beautiful way for you. And you don't have to, you know, struggle within it and, and keep holding on. So with the idea of um, letting go and, and allowing the higher power, whatever we want to call it, to, to guide us or take over, like, does, how, can, how can we, like, allow that to, to come? Uh, I, don't think, I don't know how to word it. Like, basically, you're, you're, when you say, like, connecting with source, like, what's a good way to do it? I know, like, we, we speak about meditation and stuff, but it can be really challenging, especially when you've got like a big decision to make. Like, I don't know if you're going to buy a new car or if you're going to start a new job. How, how would you feel uh, more connected to the guidance in, in making that decision? You know, it has a lot to do with how your mind works and allowing your mind to be quiet for a little bit. And that is probably the biggest challenge for people because the mind has so much to say. You know, the and the mind will tell you stories, the mind will tell you lies, the mind will tell you truth, so it's not always easy to discern, you know, if, if the information your mind is giving you is legit. <laughs> so it's a practice of quieting the mind, and you can do that through meditation. Some people do that better through moving the physical body, like with exercise or, or being in nature. Um, you know, I'm not someone to sit and meditate generally. I do better if I'm taking a hike in nature or something like that that allows me to, you know, move, keep, move and get that flow going so that the stagnation doesn't happen in my mind. So it's that practice of first really starting and creating a discipline where you work with allowing your mind to be quiet because when your mind is so noisy you can't hear that still small voice of your heart of your I am presence of source you know the mind takes over and can be really noisy so you have to find ways of quieting the mind and it's not I want to be very careful here it's not suppressing the mind it's not trying to get it to you know shut up and go away it's an integration that happens so you want your heart and your mind to be connected and integrated. You want your mind to be active, but the mind is in service to your heart. The mind is in service to source, to your I am presence. So getting the, you know, the priorities clear first, <laughs> like who's, whose voice has, you know, whose voice you want to hear, first of all, and then having the mind do its thing, but be, you know, give it a task, give it something to do so that it's you know it feels useful so that it feels like it's you know it's it's like an ego you treat it like a, a child you make sure it has a has a task it has a use so it feels valuable and then, then you can hear those quieter voices and that's really a, a practice you know it takes time to to exercise those disciplines it takes time to cultivate the voice of your heart so that you can hear what's going on you know from a, a higher place that, that's really great advice and in, particularly in the beginning it's so difficult like it feels like you've got a monkey in your mind that's like jumping around everywhere and, and doesn't want to be still but um, yeah that, I've, def, I've used that advice in the past. Something that I wanted to ask you about since we're speaking about the current state of things that are going on, um, what, with, with hurricanes and um, I, I don't watch the news, so I don't know what this one is called, but um, I've, I've been seeing a lot of things about hurricanes, and um, this, this one's particularly bad. Um, someone said to me that this is nature's way of balancing things out, and I would just like to get your perspective on this. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Um... I feel like there are a couple layers to what's going on with these natural disasters, and I'm going to throw in the, the wildfires and the earthquakes that have been happening too, because it's all part of this whole system that we have. So 
this is my take what I sort of feel intuitively that's happening and I haven't put a lot of thought and research into it um, haven't really asked Prime Creator about it but this is just kind of my intuitive take on it that that yes the earth does need to balance and cleanse and so she is she's doing whatever is needed to do that um, but there's something called uh, geoengineering or you know you may have heard the term harp and that's where um, the weather is manipulated and so I believe what's happening is that you know these things may have started naturally and then the weather manipulation is amplifying the severity of what's going on so wh when you say weather manipulation can can you just explain what you mean by that yeah, you know, I'm not a technical science -y kind of person, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to give that disclaimer. So do you, do you mean that, like, there's actual technology that can help to manipulate the weather? Yes, there is actual technology that can create storms, that can create rain, that can manipulate, you know, clouds and sun, not, not sunshine necessarily, but can manipulate, you know, and, and create or make things worse within the weather system. So I've, I've, sorry. It can create droughts as well, you know, because it can manipulate the weather to hold the rain back. I've heard of HAARP, the H-A-A-R-P, I think is, yeah. the, is the thing. I've heard of it, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, I thought it was a myth, like a rumor. And I heard of it from... Um, there's an old, for anyone who knows who this is, there's an old 90s rapper, his name's Prodigy. It's either him or someone else from Mob Deep. They were talking about this in an interview. They were saying how, um, you know, like when we go in for surgery, they have something uh, that can suppress the immune system and then they give something that starts it back up again. And they were saying that's like, a, in effect, a cure for certain diseases. And um, then they were speaking about this weather system. And they said that, they can pinpoint an area on the globe to have these weather conditions. And at that time, I was like quite young. I just thought it was a load of hokum. I was like, yeah, whatever. But, you know, I don't think that it's necessarily not true anymore, purely because of all of the things I've been learning about in the last couple of years. But what do you think the agenda is behind doing that? Population control. Yeah, it's it's uh, unfortunate, but I think that like that's where my mind goes straight away. Um, do you, is there anything we could do about this? Absolutely. I mean, you know, a lot of light workers, um, and I was very active on Facebook at the time of the hurricanes and earthquakes and fires and everything. A lot of light workers were setting up meditations and you know calling people to gather just to send love and light into the storms and and the fires and everything. So that's one thing we can do. Um, another thing is, you know, I did bring up this topic, but not to focus on it, to keep our focus on what we are creating in our lives, to keep our focus on how we can help each other, how we can serve each other, how we can um, serve ourselves and continue our ascension journeys. And, you know, in essence, instead of allowing that chaotic energy to put us into fear or to put us into anger or you know to manipulate our emotions to be in, to be in charge of our responses to be in charge of our being and you know if you if you need to feel grief over a loss uh, you know if you lost your home in the hurricane for example there's nothing wrong with that feel what you need to feel but don't let it have the power over you and that's the difference so many people went in to you know anxiety and fear over these things and that's of course that's natural that's like I'm not judging that um, but as we become more masterful we need to you know not allow these kinds of things to take us out of center and that's really important because that's part of you know if, if the powers that be can manipulate us into becoming anxious fearful people and then they can give us drugs for the anxiety and then that can cause health issues and then you know blah 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 you know but when we can maintain our center through all of this that's powerful then then we can't be touched you know we can't be manipulated into their programs
This is I'm I'm glad you brought up the 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 idea of drugs because I'm dead against putting like stuff like that into my body. Um like they, I watched a recent documentary called What the Health and and it's been like causing some real uproar and stirring like some controversy and stuff lately. Uh just have you watched it as well? I have not watched it. Okay. I've w- I watched so many of those when I was studying nutrition that I'm kind of like I feel like I know pretty much all the stuff by now, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this is not new knowledge. Like they're saying processed meat is bad for you. Dairy is probably not a good idea. Eggs probably not a good idea. Vegan diet reverses certain disease like pretty much most diseases. and if you eat a whole foods plant based diet probably going to be okay and like the reason i bring this up is because in the documentary they were showing that the um i can't remember some of the corp- um some of the american associations for nutrition and stuff like that like the people who are giving nutritional advice are being sponsored by the drug companies by the people who are producing this meat and stuff like that and you know we we could talk about these kinds of conspiracies for for years but if let's say for argument's sake this is happening right that we've used our discernment and we've decided that this is actually the case what can we as individuals do to put an end to this kind of thing yeah um you know supply and demand if we accept gmos in our food if we if we continue to buy factory farmed meat if we continue to um buy dairy that was you know, produced by caged cows you know who are suffering and and being you know treated brutally we're we're just as much part of the problem you know we think um because it was set up by certain matrix systems by certain powers that be um we want to kind of put all the blame onto them but the truth is once you know then you have to make the choice and then it's your responsibility so it's up to us it's not up to them to change it it's it's up to us we're the ones that are going to change it so you're you vote with your dollar you know what what food choices what are you buying at the grocery store what grocery stores are you shopping at you know i do most of my food shopping from my garden <laughs> um from the farmers market and from the health food store here so you know that's how i that's how i use my dollar and it's up that's, to each person to decide that's the best um phraseology i've heard of, of from everyone who says that a lot of people just say vote with your wallet or vote with your dollar that that is the the general idea but it's like as a person who is tra- me personally i'm transitioning from the old ways of eating to the new more conscious way of eating like i don't want to put certain things in my body because the environmental impact or the animal stuff like cutting out dairy has been like a really weird journey for me like in the beginning i was like oh i could never live without cheese and then now be looking at it, thinking uh like how did i ever eat it and and switching <laughs> like i i look at milk in in such a like disgusted way like i i don't even i couldn't even like think about drinking it now or putting it in anything and before i used to put like i used to have loads of eggs and put milk in the omelet and like meat and stuff and now i just think about it, like shit what was i doing but obviously like you know i don't judge that i just try and like move into it do you have any other tips for people like me who are looking to transition to that more plant-based diet. Um you know what I think is really important is to be so connected with your body and what your body needs because I'm not a proponent of veganism or vegetarianism or meat eating. I'm a proponent of what does your body need. And a lot of people um dangerously go into veganism and it works for a while, but then their body's missing some nutrients and then they get sick or you know cavities in their teeth or whatever. So it's really important to educate yourself um you know about the intellectual aspects of nutrition but also to really listen to your body and what your body is asking for because if you follow this protocol you know because you watched a movie or someone told you this is what you need to do and you're not listening to your own body eventually that might not work for you and so that's the biggest thing is to listen to your body ask your body constantly what 
what do you need from me? You know, what food, what ex what movement, what, you know, self care, what do you need from me and develop that intimate relationship with your body so that you know what foods to put in your body. And that's another funny thing, like, you know, someone made the argument to me, like, <clears throat> uh, you know, humans are animals too, like they need to eat meat. But if that was the case, surely I'd be able to like bite the head off some animal like a squirrel or a rat or something and just eat it like I, I know it sounds disgusting right <laughs> but surely like that that would be the case and I'm not a proponent for either side because I'm still making up my mind like I've, I've noticed that when I eat more vegetables I feel good who would have thought right like <laughs> you really generally for 99% of the people you can't go wrong by eating more vegetables right, exactly right and like I know one person who's allergic to cauliflower so it didn't work out for them which, which is probably <laughs> you know bad mistake luckily there are hundreds of others to choose from <laughs> exactly so on, on this on this topic of like becoming more like health conscious and listening to the body more do you think it's a case of like trying out loads of different types of vegetables, meals and stuff, and then just seeing what fits for you? It is a grand experiment. It, it really is. And the thing about approaching your food this way is that your body's always changing. So your needs can change from hour to hour, from day to day. What worked for you three years ago might not work for you today. So that's why it's important to get to know your body, to get to know the signals of your body, the cues and the clues that your body gives you. Because, you know, five years from now, when it's giving you a different message, you know how to listen to it and you know how to interpret it. And it's not necessarily an easy thing to do. It's something that definitely takes some practice, um, but it's so worth it because then you're empowered to know what to feed yourself. And I wanted to, um, to speak just on the topic of meat a little bit because, you know, if you are choosing to put animal protein in your body, choose the best possible quality, pastured animals who ate their natural diet. Like, for example, um, there are eggs that are, uh, you know, grain fed, vegetarian fed chickens. Well, chickens aren't vegetarians. They eat grubs and things that they pick out of the ground. So if you're eating eggs that were vegetarian, you know, the chickens were vegetarian fed, that's not a healthy chicken. Those eggs aren't healthy. So <laughs> also, um, I think it's really important if you are eating animal protein to understand the process that an animal goes through, the sacrifice that it goes through for you. You know, Native Americans, when they ate animals, they hunted the animal, they asked the animal if they could take its life, they gave thanks to the spirit of the animal. They did, you know, ritual and ceremony around it. They used the whole entire thing. You know, the, that approach to eating meat, if you choose to eat meat, is a very valuable way to approach it because it really honors the animal in a much deeper way than, you know, going through the drive through at McDonald's and, and getting something that's, you know, mostly not even meat anyway. Oh. <laughs> so. Yeah. You're, you're so right, Susie. Um, I feel like with the new age way of thinking that, uh, and this is obviously not new, but we'll, we'll go with that. Um, it's really ancient wisdom is what it is. Right. With, with these belief systems, with these old ways of living, it, uh, now that they're coming into circulation again and more people are finding out about them, there's a tremendous judgment that's being placed on people who have any diet, Let, forget whether it's vegan or not. Um, you know, people who eat meat, they want to eat meat and then they judge vegan, vegan people judge them. The whole thing is um, for people like myself who are trying to make our minds up, it can be quite a difficult way to, um, like it can be quite difficult to even just start changing the things that we eat. But I really appreciate what you said about the quality of the food that we're eating. That, when you said the food in McDonald's is not even meat, like, I okay, so when I was at university, we did this um, experiment, right? We got frozen chicken, chicken burgers, and uh, they had like breadcrumbs around them. And uh, my friend put it on top of my other friend's cabinet, uh, like wardrobe. And he said, he didn't, he didn't tell my friend, he was like, wait until the end of the year and we'll, we'll, we'll tell him that it's there. 
the whole year goes past, we take it back off, nothing happened to it. N- nothing, even the dust didn't want it. Like normally dust settles on things and you can't get it off. The dust didn't even settle, like you blew on it and it all went off. It looked brand new. And it was like, what the hell? And my friend said to me, the most, one of the most disturbing things, he looked at it and he w- like waved it like this and it started wobbling. He was like, you know, we put shit like this in our bodies like every day. He goes, Ima- like the, nothing over here wants it. Imagine what our bodies feel like when we have it. And that really like, it really opened my eyes. Like I haven't eaten fast food in a very long time. And the last time I had it, ironically, it was like after my graduation and uh, I had a, like a bucket of chicken and I was so, I was looking forward to it. I was like, yeah, it's been a long time. I had the worst stomach ache ever. Like, it's like the, the food dehydrates you because there are so many chemicals and like you need to like, I don't even know what the scientific process is behind it. But it's, it's such a strange um, yeah. process of like waking up from, from that old way of living. Yeah, the biggest thing that we need to do around this whole topic of food is drop the judgment. Um, you know, I see people saying, you know, you won't ascend unless you're vegan. Um, you know, any, you know, meat eaters won't ascend. And, you know, ultimately, um, yes, we do want to live in a fifth dimensional reality where we're in harmony with animals and nature and all of that. But here's the reality. Right now, we are still strongly connected to the third dimensional reality. And so there are three dimensional experiences here that can really assist us. You know, some people's bodies really do need animal protein. And in fact, they get really sick if they don't have it. So for someone to say you won't ascend because you're eating that, that's not fair, you know? So we need to drop the judgment and honor people's choices. And yeah, we can provide education, you know, eat the highest quality animal protein, et cetera. Um, But if we're judging each other about what we eat, we're not like, how is that ascension? You know, (laughs) judgment is not part of ascension. So I, I have a little soapbox about that because it really drives me nuts. You know, people who haven't studied nutrition make these claims and saying these things. And it's like, that's not how it works. And and Ascension is about bringing the fifth dimensional energies into the third dimensional reality. It's not about escaping the third dimension. So we have to acknowledge what's here in the third dimension and work with that and transmute it. Mm. So with with that being said, um, I'm still... I'll be honest with you, I still don't really know much about fifth dimension or living, anything like that. Can you give me like a 101 of what the fifth dimensional reality involves? You know, the overarching theme is love. So honoring each other, respecting each other, um, creating cooperation and collaboration, you know, like what you and I are doing right now here today. We're collaborating to bring information to the public. Um, there's, there's no like, you know, I'm better than you or you're better than me. It's, you know, it's none of that. We come together as, as mutuals. We come together as equals offering what we have to share. Um, there's, yeah, there's no hierarchy in the fifth dimension. There's no, you know, I'm better than you. I know more than you. Um, you know, I might be at a different place in the journey than you, but you know things that I don't know. So that kind of approach and that kind of living and then harmony, harmony with in ourselves, harmony with all other beings and all other life. And that, that love, loving yourself, sharing it with others and being able to live in a way that honors life and that honors yourself and that shares the love that you have Mm. sounds like a sounds like a beautiful place to live um and i i like the idea of not escaping where we are right now but bringing those qualities in and i feel like that's what i was doing i was trying to escape a lot of this like you know when we start waking up and we're like oh fuck that person because I can't be around them, you know, they're not woke enough for me and I'm better than you because I know about this. And I, I'll be the first to admit I was doing that for a long time. Like when I stopped drinking alcohol, I was like, 
you're basically a, a she demon and a and a, a bad person because you're doing that when i was doing it like a few months she demon right yeah like using silly words like that as well uh i don't even know where that came from i think i might have used it like twice <laughs> But th- this is like remo- on the topic of like removing judgment, trying to ascend and really like embody what we're talking about rather than just talking about it. We actually live it. Um, it's funny because recently I was talking with someone else about spiritual masturbators who, who are basically like you. I think we were speaking about this last time as well. The people who find out about all of this amazing knowledge, but they don't do anything with it. They just yeah. carry on the way they were. What what do you think the best way to like walk the path is rather than like yeah. just talking it? Um, commit to it and get support to do it. You know, we're not meant to do this journey alone. I've had a mentor for almost 13 years since I woke up almost 13 years ago. Um, I've had, you know, more than one mentor, obviously. I've had people that I've received from and that have helped me out and it's really important to get that support to create a community of support around you in some way so that you have accountability so that you have people that you can go to when things are going on and you need to you know vent or you need to get some answers and and clarity you know that that support is invaluable and yeah you can look things up on the internet and get lots of information and you can do the journey that way but you know we're meant to collaborate we're meant to come together we're meant to work together to play together and to support each other so um, on that note I'd love to share that on Facebook I've created a creation temple group that goes with my creation temple website and this month we're doing a 30-day joy journey so it started at the beginning of September we're gonna go to the end of September and we're focusing on joy and it's just a place where people can come and get support for that, you know, and it's and it's free and people can, you know, if you're on Facebook, you can just join in and and start focusing on joy and what that means in your everyday life. That is so good to hear, because like when I think of social media, like, when, OK, if anyone looks at any of my accounts, they'll think, oh, wow, you already spend a lot of time on it. I really don't. I post my thing and then I get the hell off it because I can't handle it. And People say to me, oh, follow me back and stuff. It's not personal. I just, I don't, I don't, can't handle anyone else's life in my thing. I just don't want to look at it. But this is amazing to hear because it's things like this that are going to help us. Like there's a, there was a study that said if you're on Facebook, you're 50%. No, sorry, that's a bullshit statistic. What was it? Crap, I've forgotten what the statistic is. Basically, if you're on Facebook, you're a lot more likely to experience a mental illness like depression and and that's scary like that is really worrying that we can't like you you're you're looking to connect with people but then there's the constant comparison like oh this person put this picture up it looks like they're having a great time then I look at my page oh I need to compete with that and that whole like cycle goes that's really worrying but it's so great to see like people like yourself doing this and um like what I, I wanted to ask you something I forgot what it was oh yeah um where did the idea of creation temple come from oh wow okay let's take me back a little bit um that's funny where did it come from um I wanted to create a space for light workers to come together to get support for their journeys and to share what they are creating, what they're manifesting. Because Prime Creator kept saying, you know, focus on your creations of light, focus on your creations of light. Um, You know, come together with other people and focus on your creations of light. And I was like, I, you know, I took that to heart. I was like, okay, what does that look like for me? What does that mean? And that idea was birth to have, you know, because my community is international. So it's not like I have people in Sedona, you know, coming to me every week, you know, wanting to do this. They're all around the world. So I wanted to set up a platform where we could meet, you know, all around the world, where we could meet every week and have people get the support that they need and get the, you know, the the coaching and the the camaraderie with fellow lightworkers. And it's been 
amazing for us. You know, we've been um, doing this since the beginning of October, so almost a year now. And the people that have been um, coming every week to the gatherings have just transformed their lives and they keep they keep transforming because there's always more right so it's just it's been amazing that's so cool and this is like i think it's so powerful to see people like yourself creating an online community where people can go to experience something like a 30 day joy experience is is just so like it's just the opposite of what I would have thought people are doing on social media from everything I hear, right? Like, you know, um, not instead of competing with each other, it's like, oh, here, let's all come together. And, and now, like, like you were saying, sharing, collaborating and really enjoying themselves rather yeah. than living in like that. This. Yeah. Let's not be negative. I made I made a commitment to penetrate the matrix meaning like, you know, the third dimensional ugh, sludge and stuff to bring my light into that. And so Facebook is one of the ways that I do that. You know, my purpose for being on Facebook is to bring the light there. Definitely. It's it's definitely a place that needs it. Uh, and and that's that's not to say, like to badmouth the place itself, but like there's, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on that we want to change. And in, in alignment with walking the path rather than talking about it, this is a great example. Um, yeah, it's a, that's a really great way to express what we're speaking about here. Um, do, you, do you think that there's any room for, I don't even know how I want to phrase the question, but basically when there's like people who we've, you know, they know about certain things in spirituality, in the conscious way of behaving, but they insist on living that old system way of life. Do you think it's just up to us to say, okay, you do that, I'm going to do this and not have anything to do with them? Um, I'm not sure I'm clear on the question. Like, is there anything for us to do? So, like, is, is, there, is it best for us to just leave them to it and not, like, talk with them about these new ideas? Um, or is there something else we can do to involve them? Yeah, I always think that the best way um, we can help those kinds of people is to live by example. And if they want to, you know, know what we're up to and get more information about what we're doing, then they can come to us and, and ask. And, you know, I also I also do that by putting out a lot of videos and teachings and things like that. So um, but, you know, honestly, none of those teachings that I put out are any good if I'm not living it myself. So that's really, really important. The integrity of my messages um, they have different codes and information in them because I live what I'm talking about. And if I don't know about it, I don't, I don't preach about it, you know? <laughs> it's not... So I think that's the best way to help those kinds of people is just to do your thing and to live by example. And, you know, I, I don't think preaching is going to do a lot of good because, you know, that's not going to be an effective way to reach them. The way I said it a few weeks ago is pretty funny. Um, my friend was saying to me, oh, why don't you tell this person about what you do? I was like, well, why? Like, if they're happy where they are right now, that's cool. When they're looking for this information, they might find me and that's, that's cool. But I said to he was like, yeah, yeah, but just, just go and tell them. I said, if I threw a book at your head and it's a pretty fat book, would you be, oh, would you be like, oh, okay, I'll read this. But, or would you be like, why the hell did you throw that at me? It hurt. Like, what the hell? Like, that, that's the, the way I've started to think about it. And since I started thinking about it before, like that, before saying something, I just think to myself, would I want someone to throw the damn book at me? No. Like, we, always, we say throw the book at him, right, as it's as a bad thing. Like, that's, that just implied. No, one, no one's reading this book, whatever it is. <laughs> love that metaphor that's so great <laughs> I, I was so glad to have this conversation with you again Susie and every time we speak I feel like I get some very valuable uh, information from you um, uh, yeah so where, where's the best place for us to get hold of you if we've got a question for you uh, the best place is creationtemple.com or susiebyler.com and there's contact pages on both of those websites where you can reach me Cool. Um, all of Susie's links will be in the description and on the screen. Thank you so much once again for joining us, Susie. Always a pleasure. And 
and thanks everyone in the audience for watching, listening, subscribing. It's great to have you here. And um, you know you can catch the podcast every Wednesday and Saturday. And we'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you.